So now we're going to talk about how we can fix the pipeline to handle those data hazards without having to introduce stalls all over the place. And the technique we're going to use for this is called forwarding. We're going to forward the data in the pipeline so we don't have to stall. So there are two types of data hazards that we're going to run into. The first one occurs when the data is ready, but it's not where we expect it. The second one occurs when the data is not yet ready. So for the first type, where the data is ready, the results might be somewhere else. They might be in the execute stage, the memory stage, or the write-back stage, but they're not in the register file yet. In the case when data is not ready, it's because the results are being calculated now, or they're going to be calculated in a later cycle. So if we look at these two types of data hazards, we can't really do much for the one where the data isn't ready yet, because we can't predict the future. We don't know what the result's going to be. But for the one where the data is not where we expect it, here we have an opportunity to do something. We can move the data from wherever it is, and we can move it to where we want it, instead of waiting. And that's what forwarding is, and that's what we're going to talk about. So when I say we can't really predict the future, well, take a look in the next lecture, and you'll see how we actually are going to try and predict the future to solve some of these problems. So now let's talk about forwarding. So forwarding helps in the case when the data is available, but it's not where we expect it. So maybe the data is in the execute stage, but not in the register file, or in the memory stage, but not in the register file. With forwarding, we can move the data to where we want it. So we can grab the result from wherever it is, and we can send a copy of it to wherever we need it. Now, because we're just sending a copy of it, the result is still going to be written to the register file as normal, but we'll get that copier earlier. So since it's ready, we can get the data earlier, move it to the right place, and use it earlier. And this allows us to avoid having to have so many stalls or bubbles in our pipeline. How do we go about doing this? Well, we just need to add more muxes, wires, and logic so that we can send the values around in the processor. Now let's take a look at where forwarding can help us. So here we've got a bunch of instructions, and they have dependencies. You can see the dependencies here between the first three instructions. So the first subtraction is going to generate the value R2, which is then going to be used by the AND and the OR instructions that follow them. Now if we look at what happens in the pipeline here, we can see where we need to forward. So that value R2 is generated in clock cycle 3 from the ALU, and we need that in clock cycle 4 for the ALU for the AND. So if we can forward from the ALU in the previous instruction to the ALU in the next one, we can avoid having to put in any bubbles. This data is available, it's just not where we expect it. It's not in the register file when we need it. Now let's take a look at the OR instruction. So the OR instruction is the same sort of thing. The data for the OR instruction is available, it's ready, it's sitting there at the end of the memory pipeline stage, but we need to forward it from the memory pipeline stage to the ALU. So if we can forward this R2 value from the memory stage for the subtraction instruction to the execute stage for the OR instruction, we don't need to delay the execution. What about the rest of the instructions? Well, for the other instructions, we don't have to worry about it. Because by clock cycle 5, we've already written the value into the register file. And for the add <coughs> and store word instructions, we can now access it directly through the register file. So those are taken care of. But what forwarding helps us here is it helps us so that we don't need to put in stalls for the AND and OR instructions. And that's because the data is already available, it's just not where we expect it. So let's talk about how we actually build this forwarding. Here's our pipeline, and we're going to put in the lines we need for forwarding. So to do that, we're going to need to add another MUX to our ALU. This MUX up here is going to allow us to choose either the forwarding input or the register input to the ALU. The first forwarding path is here, and this forwarding path is going to forward data from the EX stage of the previous instruction to the EX stage of the current instruction. We then have another forwarding path here, and this forwards from the memory stage of two instructions before to the current instruction. In addition to these forwarding paths, we have the regular paths from the register file and we're going to need some control logic to decide which ones of these paths we choose. So here's our control logic. The control logic is going to look at these destination registers that are coming, sorry, the source registers that are coming out in the current in the EX stage, and it's going to look at the destination register from the memory stage 
and from the right backstage. So this tells us which sources we need, and these over here tell us which results the memory stage has and which result the execute stage just produced. From this information, the forwarding logic can choose which path it uses. Do we forward data from the EX stage or the MEM stage, or do we use data directly from the register file? So a question here, why is the memory stage forwarding data, why is, sorry, the data from the MEM stage coming from the write back stage? Well, the answer here is that the data from the MEM stage is in the pipeline register right before the write back stage. We wrote it into this pipeline register at the end of the stage. So if we want to forward that data, we need to take it out of that pipeline register. So what did forwarding do for us? Well, if the result is ready, but it's not in the register file where we expect it, we can forward it to the instruction that needs it. We do this by looking at the destinations of the data in the memory and write back stages, and we look to see if the instruction in the execute stage needs that data as a source. If it does, we can then forward the data. How did we do this? Well, we added some more inputs to our ALU, so we could select forwarded results, and we looked at data that's coming from the memory and write back stages, and we put in control logic that looks at the destination and source registers for each stage to decide if it should be forwarded. So now let's talk a little bit about how forwarding helps loads and stores. So here I have a load word and an add, and the load word is going to produce results which the add is going to use. Let's take a look at how this works. So here's our load word instruction. And what you notice is that the data is not ready until after the data memory. So at the end of clock cycle four, we have the data back from the data memory. But the add instruction wants to access that data earlier. The add instruction needs the R2 value at the beginning of clock cycle four for the ALU. But this data isn't ready at that point. It's gonna be available in the future. At the end of clock cycle four, it's not ready at the beginning of clock cycle four. So what this says is since the data is not ready, forwarding is not going to help us here. So if we can't forward, we need to have a delay. So we put in a delay between our load word and our use of it, and now what we can see is that this works. The data is available at the end of the, of the memory stage in cycle four, and if we have forwarding directly from the memory pipeline stage to the execute pipeline stage, we can forward our result and use it right away. But even with this forwarding, we still need this one cycle delay because R2 is just not ready. It's only ready after the memory has been accessed. So this means we're going to have an instruction in here which is going to have to be a no-op. That is, we have to do something in between there while we wait for the data. And in this case, we're using the add R0, R0 again, and this is a no-op or no operation because it's adding 0 to 0. But it's important to point out here that if the compiler or the person writing the code can find useful work to put in here, we don't have to waste this cycle. If there's another instruction, which doesn't depend on the load word instruction, you could put it in here and take advantage of this delay. So here's a question. What forwarding is needed from a store instruction? Well, the answer is none. Store instructions don't write back to the register file. So no instructions after them can need to get the results. You may need forwarding to a store instruction to get the address or data from a previous instruction, but you don't need to forward the results of store instructions because they don't write to the register file. 